Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be going through a drama action film entitled Warriors of the Rainbow Sadiq Bale There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with a hunt by a mountain river in Taiwan, wherein three Bunan men are soberly hunting a boar. As they try shooting it with an arrow, a group led by young Mona Rudao of Sadiq people suddenly attacks the Bunan men, allowing them to leave the river and hide. Appallingly, Mona Rudao invades the territory to hunt animals for their meal. Afterward, Mona aggressively pushes his members and swims in the river. Then he quickly takes across the river, only to catch a Bunan man and mercilessly kill it. After that, he takes away the boar when suddenly his group shouts, saying that Bunan from Tabang clan is coming. Due to that, Mona immediately runs to escape. Unfortunately, Mona fails to take away the boar while escaping. Later, Mona and his clan return to the village, wherein the villagers joyously welcome them. Afterward, Mona gets a service of making him tattoo marks of manhood on his face. It acknowledges his offered blood sacrifice to their ancestors' spirits. Due to that, Mona eventually gets the ability to guard their clan and hunting grounds on the Rainbow Bridge, wherein their ancestors' spirits await the reunion with his brave soul. In 1895, China mercilessly ceded the island of Taiwan to Japan under the Treaty of Shimonoseki between Japan and China. From there, it shows that the Japanese invasion of Taiwan ended with Japan defeating Han Chinese resistance. Thus, the island of Taiwan becomes a new territory of Japan's empire and has yet to receive Mikado's grace. However, there's a threat from the islanders of Taiwan that are warlike, saying that they're armed to fight the Japanese. As they prepare, the Japanese form a conference to plan their next mission to the island of Taiwan, wherein the Japanese military officials will sweep the entire island with force once they disembark at Kilung port. However, the Japanese general, Yahiko Kamada, disapproves, saying that they must prevent any disrespect from the islanders and gain their wholehearted allegiance to the Japanese Empire of the Sun. Technically, the Japanese military officials see the natives, especially the tribal savages, as an obstacle to the ample resources of Taiwan. Meanwhile, Mona Rudao joins the hunting with his father. As they find animals inside the forest, Mona receives an order to hunt a deer for his wedding. On the other hand, the natives of Taiwan suddenly attack a team of Japanese soldiers despite having only hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons compared to the guns of their enemies. Meanwhile, Mona magnificently shoots the deer. Due to that, Mona's tribe, the Mahibu clan, happily celebrates his wedding. The following day, Mona walks his way to trade with Han Chinese off the mountain. However, one of his comrades suddenly calls his name pointing to the Sadiq people from the Tota group entering the village. Due to that, Mona indecisively mocks the Tota group before leaving. Pissed off, Temu Willis, the young man from the Tota group, suddenly shouts, telling Mona that he shouldn't be too proud because he's not afraid of him. Fortunately, Mona controls himself from attacking Temu and leaves the village with his group. The following day, the Japanese people rest inside the woods before continuing their mission when suddenly Mona begins shooting one of the Japanese soldiers. Due to that, Japanese General Oshima orders the native people of Taiwan to ban all trading between the Hans and the Wush savages, where the camp of Mona is located. Later, different clans suddenly shoot the Japanese soldiers while passing through the cliff trail. Due to that, the attack leads to a battle between the Japanese and natives, including Mona and Mahibu clan. Eventually, Ru Dao Lua, Mona's father, leads the attack wherein he aggressively cuts the ties binding the big rocks, resulting in the deaths of the Japanese soldiers. Meanwhile, General Oshima eventually collaborates with a group of Bunun, wherein he orders them to get Mona's men drunk by trading a wine. Later at night, the Bunun men wake up their chief to start their mission. Afterward, the chief begins ambushing the Mahibu clan while they are asleep. Afterward, he directly goes to Mona's position to kill him when suddenly Mona takes immediate action to avoid his sword. Despite getting drunk, Mona still fights against the Bunun chief while shouting to his men to wake the others. He then says that the Bunun from Tabang clan are hunting heads, so they must leave the place before everyone gets killed. After the escape, the Mahibu clan quickly return to their village to prepare for the battle. On the other hand, Japanese soldiers are already entering the woods, allowing Mona to shoot one of them with an arrow. Due to that, an intense battle eventually ensues, wherein the Japanese soldiers immediately invade the nearby villages. In contrast, the other Japanese are left in the woods to continue fighting with Mona and his group. Unfortunately, Mona's village, the Mahibu, and the neighboring villages suddenly fall under the control of the Japanese. Then, on the other hand, Ru Daolua suddenly gets injured by an explosion thrown by the Japanese soldiers in the woods. Due to that, Mona has left no choice but to retreat and carries his injured father to escape. Surprised, 
Mona and his group find out that the Japanese had taken their village upon returning to the village. Later, Mahibu and the other villages have left no choice but to abolish the custom of keeping the heads they have hunted, causing Mona to become aggressive and suddenly attack one of the Japanese soldiers. Twenty years later, the native men of Taiwan eventually became subject to low-wage logging jobs in the forest. Unfortunately, a lot has changed on the island of Taiwan as the Japanese control the civilization of the natives. Technically, the Wush savages are prohibited from carrying guns they own and have no choice but to stop their traditional animal and human hunting. Due to that, the Japanese officials acknowledge themselves for turning the uncivilized heartland into a civilized one. Later, the Han Man grocery store owner forces the native men to accept the wine he gives despite knowing they can't afford it. Afterward, he begins massaging one of them when a Japanese police officer, Hanaoka Jiro, suddenly shouts, saying they should stop spending their small wage on wine. Due to that, the native men suddenly get pissed and mock Hanaoka for being a thrall to the Japanese. Meanwhile, native women start working in the Japanese houses and serving the colonizers. Unfortunately, it turns out that native women have left no choice but to give up the traditional weaving work. On the other hand, the children, including Pawan Nyawi, start attending school in Wush village under the teachings of Hanaoka, a sadic policeman who adopts the lifestyle of the Japanese. Suddenly, while the native men are busy cutting the trees during the rainy season, a rainbow from the sky appears. Due to that, they start chanting their song, the Sadik Bale. In the late autumn of 1930, the village of Mona begins holding a wedding for the young couple, wherein some of the young native men borrow guns from the Japanese soldiers as part of their preparation. As they receive the guns, Tato and Basso answer the questions from a police officer about their father Mona and his attempted hunting. Due to that, Tato says there's no more to hunt if the Japanese have hacked down all the trees on their hunting grounds. So, if they don't go hunting immediately, there's a possibility of having nothing left once the trees are all gone in the forest. Meanwhile, Mona discreetly goes hunting for the wedding when suddenly he sees Pawan catching the running boar in the river. While watching Pawan holding the dead boar, Mona and his group eventually hear a shot inside the forest. Due to that, they immediately run to check what's happening, only to find out that Temu Walis and his group are also hunting. Pissed off, Mona and Temu begin quarreling for the hunting ground when Suddenly Kojima Genji appears and says that Temu's only teaching Kojima's son to hunt. Later, the Mahibu clan begins the wedding celebration and allows his sons to slaughter a cow for their meal. While rejoicing, a newly appointed and nervous Japanese policeman, Yoshimura, suddenly appears to inspect their village. Due to that, Toto respectfully offers to share his homebrewed millet wine with Yoshimura. However, Yoshimura declines and says he won't drink Tato's fermented wine because it has saliva and considers it unsanitary beer. While declining Tato's offer, Yoshimura successfully pushes him away, then says that Tato's hand is covered in blood from an animal he has just slaughtered, giving him more reason not to drink Tato's wine. Afterward, Yoshimura notices blood from his uniform, allowing him to beat Tato multiple times. Due to that, Tato has left no choice but to fight back while his young brother, Basso, also joins and beats Yoshimura. Shocked, Mona suddenly runs toward the ensuing brawl and stops them. Afterward, Mona lets Yoshimura leaves their village when suddenly Yoshimura eventually fears for his life and threatens to punish their whole village for what they did to him. So, Tato convinces his father to prepare for the fight, yet Mona only scolds him for provoking Yoshimura. After a while, Mona brings his sons to the police station and tries to mend relations with Yoshimura. However, Yoshimura refuses to accept their apology, telling them that he has already filed the report on the case of them beating up a police officer. Later at night, Tato, Basso, and the native young Sadik men realize how unacceptable mass punishment is once an individual from their tribe accidentally does something wrong with the Japanese. Due to that, they all have decided to fight and die in honor rather than live in shame. Then, Piho Sapo from Hogo Village suggests killing the Japanese soldiers the day after tomorrow, October 27th. The following day, Tato, Basso, and their friends decide to approach Mona and convince him to start a war with the Japanese. While convincing him, Basso tells his father to show them what they can do. Fortunately, Mona realizes that war is unavoidable and feels encouraged by Temu's wisdom from his father to protect and preserve their Sadiq race. Due to that, Mona eventually decides to fight despite reminding them that it is impossible to win. Afterward, he commands the young men to inform the chiefs of 12 native clans about the attack. Mona then says they will gather in Wush to offer a blood sacrifice tomorrow morning. Technically, they will schedule their attack on the day of the Japanese sports game, where all the Japanese soldiers will gather in the schoolyard of the Wush village. Meanwhile, Hanaoka, 
who eventually became a police officer, suddenly notices that Mona is preparing for war. Due to that, he immediately goes to the Mahibu village, where he finds Mona cleaning his sword inside his house. Afterward, he tries to persuade him not to start the war when suddenly Tato and his group enter Mona's home, attacking Hanaoka with his sword. So, Mona immediately stops his son and proceeds to talk with Hanaoka. Mona then hears Hanaoka convincing them not to fight with the Japanese, so Mona has left no choice but to force Hanaoka to collaborate with them to prove that he's a true sadiq. Due to that, they have decided to fight and die in honor rather than live in shame. After Hanaoka leaves, Mona learns that only six of the native clans will join them. So, he immediately goes to the top of the mountain to call upon their ancestors by singing with his father's ghost. Technically, Mona's ritual is a sign to determine the beginning of the war. On the night before the battle, Mona's daughter, Ma Hung Mona, suddenly tries seducing her husband, an attempt that would break a tribal rule and prohibit him from going to war. However, it didn't work out. So, Ma Hung reveals that she already knows about their preparation for the battle. Yet, her husband refuses to hear her words, resulting in Ma Hung being saddened by the prospect. After a while, the natives, including Tato, discreetly attack the police outposts. Afterward, Mona eventually rallies young men from village to village. Once they get into Mahibu, Mona immediately instructs Tana to split his men into two teams, where he'll lead one team to eradicate the police stations. So, from there, Tana will cut off the communication of the Japanese to the east while his other team will follow Mona to Gungu clan to meet up with the others. Eventually, Mona finally convinces the last chief Tadao Nogun of Hogo village to join the battle. The following day, Mona realizes that they will all get killed, but he still chooses to fight for the sake of their ancestors' pride. Afterward, he talks to his young native men, saying that only a warrior with blood on his hand can enter the land of their ancestors and proclaim themselves as a true sadiq. The movie ends with sadiq men killing all Japanese men, women, and children on the sports game day. Luckily, Hanaoka saves his family by covering them with native cloth. After that, the sadiq men attack the police station and immediately take the guns kept inside. On the other hand, Tadao's daughter, Obing, eventually spares her life by hiding in a storage room for she wears Japanese clothes. However, one Japanese police officer escapes. Pawan and the other boys also get involved by killing his abusive Japanese teacher and his family during the attack. After the encounter, Mona sits in the schoolyard full of corpses. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos like this and to help the channel grow.